This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one, we're going to make portals, which is something I've tackled before, but I've never made it look like this, so this is a special tutorial, I'll have you know, uh, where we're going to make these kind of colorful spirals that kind of expand outwards. It's a cool-looking effect. So that's what we're going to be making today, and if you're kind of new to geometry nodes, and this might be an intermediate tutorial, uh, consider getting Introduction to Geometry Nodes. It's a book I wrote that teaches you uh, going from nothing, beginner, uh, to intermediate. It levels you up in geometry nodes. Uh, that being said, I think we're ready to tackle, I don't know why I went out of full screen, uh, tackle this project. Probably should have saved. Okay, take your cube, go to geometry nodes, make this a geometry nodes object, and delete uh, the group input so that we can put something fresh in here. The idea of the portal is we're basically going to have a bunch of spirals growing outwards, is the idea. So, if I use a spiral node, uh, which looks like this, it's kind of a tornado, but if we look at it from the top down, it's kind of this circle getting smaller. We're going to use a spiral, we're going to set the start radius to zero, so it actually starts in the middle, and if we add a bunch of copies of this, we're going to get a more complicated shape. So I'm going to instance on points, where this is the instance, and the points are just going to be a generic points node. Uh, so this is the number of copies, the number of instances of our spiral. I'm going to use five uh, to begin with, and to actually show them all, right now they're all overlapping, uh, I need to rotate each one by the index. So let's do that. And here uh, you can see uh, we get a bunch of spirals. The more we add, the more filled in this looks, and they happen to not overlap because we're adding one radian each time, uh, which is not a multiple of two pi, don't worry about it. Point is they're not going to overlap. I'm going to have 30 of these, and I'm going to increase the resolution so we have something a bit nicer. And now the question is, how do we get this thing to grow outwards? Uh, we could kind of scale up the curve or something like this, but something that m is much easier is we can actually trim the curve. So if we look at one spiral, you can see this kind of grows it inwards or outwards, depending on your perspective, uh, or depending on which uh, side you use. So I'm going to increase this back to 30. Uh, we can use this to grow our spirals, each spline individually. So I'm going to grow this over time, and you can see it's expanding. I'm just going to have this slow down a little so it's not as intense. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.25 so it's going four times slower. It does this, but then you can see it just kind of stops because there's no more to expand. I want it to repeat each time. Uh, so a trick to do that is use a fraction that's going to get rid of the integer part and just keep the decimal. So when we go above one, it maps back to zero and it kind of loops. So you can see now it goes back to the beginning. Uh, right now, they're all kind of synced up, which is why it looks kind of lame. Uh, easy fix for that. I'm going to add a random value. And let's see what that looks like. That seems to do nothing at the moment. Uh, I think that's because we need to realize these instances so we can actually evaluate random numbers. And there you go. Now we have these spirals growing and shrinking. I want to turn this into actual geometry we can see. So I'm going to use a curve to mesh node. This is a way to take our curves and actually give them depth and geometry. I'm going to expand these using a circle as the profile. And you can see uh, we get something that looks like this, which is almost what we want, but they're blinking in and out of existence, which is something we need to fix. A kind of clever solution to this, I'll say, is uh, using a set curve radius node, which is going to scale up our curve radius, right, by a constant factor. I'm going to take the inverse of what we calculated before. So this is telling us how much to expand the curve using the trim curve. I'm going to say 1 minus that is the inverse. I'm going to connect that, which almost gives us what we want. But you can see it's kind of like randomized. Like each part of the curve is, you know, some radius. It's not, it's not working. Uh, the issue here is our random values being evaluated per, in, uh, per point. We want it per spline. We can solve that using an evaluate on domain with a spline and plug in the index. And now you can see uh, these are shrinking as they get to the largest size because it's the inverse, right? As it gets very big, close to one, one minus that gets close to zero and it makes it super thin. Uh, we can make this a bit better looking by scaling this by some number. So this is the initial thickness. And uh, a cool thing that I did in my original is I didn't have this perfect spiral. I had it kind of look complicated, and that's super easy to do. We just need to distort our original spiral, which will carry on to the next part of the 
thing. So uh, we're gonna use set position. Anytime we wanna change the position, we use set position. I'm gonna randomize this with a noise texture, which is kind of giving us the right thing, but you can see it's kind of off center. It went up by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that vector. Uh, we can fix that by adding in a vector math node and subtracting by 0 0.5. So now this is centered and then we can scale this effect so it's not as intense. So I'm gonna scale it and you can see this is kind of like our spikiness control in some sense. I'm thinking let's bring down our noise texture scale so it's kind of like lower resolution noise. And I'm just gonna play with this until I get the look that I like. And you can play around with the roughness to make it a bit more uh, chaotic in a sense. And I like the look of that. Kind of final touches before we get into the material, which is a interesting part of this tutorial, but I want this thing to rotate because it's just kind of expanding outwards and it looks cool, but there's not enough going on here. So an easy way to do that to confuse the eye is you can just take this and have it rotate over time. That way it kind of makes it look like there's a lot more going on here, like this thing is being conjured up, uh, even though we only added in like two nodes. So I'm gonna multiply this by 0.5, so it's going a bit slower, and I like the look of this effect. Okay, final thing to do is we need to add in a material. So I'm gonna use a set material node, uh, use a material, and our initial kind of look, so again, this is a kind of a tornado looking thing, but we look at it from the top. Or what you can do is you can take the original spiral and give it a height of zero that compresses it to the XY plane. Um, anyways, our original material, we're gonna do this in Eevee, is just gonna be an emission material. So you can see it's glowing and I'm just gonna make the background black so you can see that a bit better. It's just glowing and it kind of looks boring. Uh, we wanna add some color to this and a bit of variation. So here's what I recommend. Uh, we want we want to know how far along the curve we are. I think that's reasonable. So uh, we can have the tips be a different color than the tail. Um, one way to do this, probably the best way to do this, is using a store named attribute. And we want to use the spline parameter, which is nowhere. So we need to add in spline parameter. Connect this to the value, and we're going to call this length. So I'm making a, a new attribute that we're storing. This is going to tell us how far along the curve we are. Uh, just to visualize this, here's what this looks like. Hmm. Uh, we want to do this before the curve to mesh is the issue here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to connect this here. Basically do the same thing, but just bring it back a little. Um, okay. Okay. So this should actually store the information. We can't see it right now because we're evaluating on geometry, but in theory, we have an attribute before the curve to mesh. So I'm gonna go to um, shading. I'm gonna look at the attribute and I'm going to look at the length. So this is the attribute we made. And now you can see it's kind of like this black and white gradient that starts very dark in the beginning and it kind of expands outwards. So starts black here and then expands outwards. Uh, the point of this is we can plug this into the color. So I'm going to connect this to the hue, uh, give it a source color, and now you can see this is changing uh, over the length of the spiral. I kind of want less of a gradient here, so I'm going to multiply this by like 0.25, so we're only getting a fraction of this. And you can use addition to offset the color. You, you can see what I mean. This is kind of a hypnotic effect in itself if you wanted to animate that. Uh, but I'm just going to connect this to the emission color. Let's see what that looks like. Needs to be way brighter, but maybe not that bright. And since we're in Eevee, we can add in some bloom. And that gives us the beginning of the effect. I think it's kind of too bright everywhere. So one thing we can do is I'm going to take our attribute and use this as kind of a gradient for the uh, emission strength. I'm gonna multiply it by 15 and connect it to the emission strength. And I just wanna change the color scheme a little. I don't like this uh, purple and blue. This isn't a Curtis Holt tutorial. So I'm gonna go for kind of like a orangish, pinkish. Oh, it was perfect a second ago. There we go. I'm looking for a look that 
looks uh, like that. So in case you didn't know, this tutorial has been brought to you by Squarespace. And if you don't know what Squarespace is, it is a website that helps you make websites. You don't need to know how to code or anything like this. You just drag and drop your elements and you can create a beautiful website. In fact, my website, www.cgmatter.com, uh, is made uh, with Squarespace. Three features you might want to know about when you sign up with Squarespace is one, you get access to analytics so you can see who is going to your website, demographic type information. Two, you can actually embed social media feed directly inside your website so you don't need to redirect to Twitter or anything like this. Embed it directly in your website, keep people there. And thirdly, like I said, you can just drag and drop elements without any coding so you don't need any like HTML knowledge or anything like this. So if this sounds interesting to you, head over to Squarespace and design a website and when you're ready to take that thing live, you can click my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.